So you want to get better at Rhino? Then you have to train your keyboard muscle. And this is how I like to train. Yeah. Yeah. That's typically not how you get better at Rhino. But in today's video, we're going to share keyboard tips and tricks that's actually going to make you a better Rhino designer and work faster and spend less time and get some time back to do some actual exercise. So let's get into it. Okay, so maybe a quick thing before we get started I should talk about is that there are two main ways to customize um, your keyboard shortcuts slash commands and that is going to be using Elias and keyboard. So the main difference is that Elias is customizing or kind of creating a new command out of um, nowhere, uh, out of thin air. So let's say if you wanted to create like this awesome command and make that run certain series of action, then you can create that in Elias. And on the other hand, if you want to create a keyboard shortcut, you can obviously go down to the keyboard side and look at all the available options that Rhino recognizes and kind of type in all the commands that you want to use. We'll give you a quick example of the keyboard first and then go over to the Elias. Um, so the first tip I'm going to talk about is Control shift z So typically, when you get Rhino out of the box, the undo command is Control z like all commands out there, but the redo is at Control y which is shared with some programs and not with some other programs. So what I'm gonna do is change up this setting so that I can redo things pretty easily without having to use Control y which is like kind of far away from the keyboard. So let's go into the options. I'm gonna type in options. And under the menus, I'm gonna go under Rhino options and keyboard. So from here, you can look at all the possible keyboard combinations that Rhino can use. And I'm going to go down to Control shift z and type in exclamation mark redo. So just a quick tip here. What exclamation mark means here is that that cancels whatever command that was going on before. So let's say I was in the middle of creating a box and do Control shift z That's going to cancel the box command and then go into um, the redo command right after and what, uh, what comes right after the underscore means that we're gonna normalize our language to English so apparently if you localize your Rhino setting your commands become localized language so let's say you're using a Spanish Rhino then redo won't work on the Rhino unless you put this underscore in front of the command then the Rhino will think oh okay so whatever that's coming at right after this underscore, it's going to be English command. So we'll find the appropriate localized version of it and run that instead. So that's what these like cryptic language is all about. If you want to learn more about it, you can go over to McNeil website and take a look at all the special characters that are available. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. So that being said, I'm going to say OK and see how that works. So I'm going to type in box right here. Let's make it full screen. Wow, none of my shortcuts are set up yet, so can't. This is really hard to use. Okay, let's go over to shaded. And now we have a box, right? And let's say we made a couple copies, but we accidentally. I thought I deleted this, right? And I want to go back. So going back is no problem. But what if I want to redo that delete? So instead of doing undo. I'm going to try doing redo by sh pressing Control shift z and that redoes, un uh, redoes a delete command. So there we go. Now I don't have to stretch out my finger all the way to Y and get things done. So this is just a quick example of how you can customize the Rhino's interface to your preference and your liking. So if you're coming from another program, maybe this is going to be really helpful for you. Let's move on to the second one. Okay, so second thing I like to do is that I like to chain commands together. So this is going to be a really fun one. Let's see. So for example, one of the if there are certain series of commands that you use very often, you can chain them in sequence and turn it into a single command. So 
instead of running like two separate commands, you only have to run one and then it'll automatically execute them all. Let's see how you can do that real quickly. So the first thing you have to do is go into options again and find a key or alias that works the best for you. For this one, I'm going to use alias this time, but you can do the same thing with the keyboard. So let's go over to click on new. And the command I want to do is command and copy and paste. So you know how typically we use command C and command D, and I'm just going to combine them and just call this a CV command. And for that, I'm going to type in copy to clipboard. So I don't want to do the multiple clicking and choosing the location. I want to paste it exactly in the same place. So I'm just going to copy the clipboard and then type in paste. Okay, so apparently for the second command, you don't have to, you can't put in the exclamation mark because that's going to cancel whatever that was going on before. So make sure to use um, exclamation mark in the beginning and no exclamation mark afterwards. I'll type in OK and try CV again. And now, as you can see, the, in the command lines, you, s you can see that both commands have executed. And now if you look closely on the viewport, now when I'm trying to select that box, it gives me a ch choice between two extrusions. One is original and the other one is probably the new one. So, and there we go. So now we have combined two different commands into a single one so you can make your life a lot easier. So that was life hack number two. Okay, so another thing that is really nice about Rhino is the snapping. This is like one of the things that like really bugged me in many different programs, but Rhino does this perfectly. And I imagine this is why like architects and designers, industrial designers use prefer Rhino over most different scenarios. So let's take a look at how we can fully take advantage of the O snapping option. Once you get Rhino fresh out of the box, normally the O snap is off. So let's go ahead and enable this. And once you enable it, you'll see all these little checkboxes at the bottom left corner. So this means that once you have enabled one of these options, Rhino will start snapping to geometry ends. It might be really nice to kind of get familiarize yourself with all these terminologies because these are like the parts that comprise different geometries and it'll help you a lot when you're trying to you know snap to a certain parts and you know which O snap to turn on and how to refer to just communication in general right what i want to show you today is how you can hack this with using your keyboard shortcuts so let's take a look normally when i'm modeling i only have a couple things on so for example i'll have end on maybe i'll have mid and maybe int per um, intersections and this is perpendicular to object snap so I'll have these on but sometimes I might want to snap to the near area or the center of a circle right so when that happens it's a bit of a hassle to like come all the way down here and then click on this tiny little checkbox every single time so what I would do is I'm gonna set up a keyboard shortcut go down to options and go down to keyboard and I'm gonna use the F keys for these features. So for example, instead of choosing help for um, the F1, let's say I'm gonna say this is end, and the second one is near. So what I typically like to do is just um, put in every single one of these into the F keys so that you can quickly reference which F key refers to which snapping option. So for these ones, you don't have to type in any special characters in the beginning, just go ahead and put that in there. And now I'll say OK. And now what I can do is, let's say I'm like in the middle of like command, right? I'm drawing a polygon and then I'm like, OK, I wanted all, all these points to go through the geometry. But at some point, I want this to snap to the side of this box, let's say. Then I can go ahead and tap on F2. And now, as you can see, the cursor will start snapping to near. And same thing happens when I type in F1. Now I only snap to the end of the geometry. So you can see how helpful this is because you can use this in the mid command and it doesn't break the command. So it just keeps going and now you have something that snaps to the edge right there. And let's try another one. I'm gonna start snapping to the near area, near, near, near. And then once I'm done snapping to the near, 
I just have to leave it and now even if I click on the same area as you can see the click goes straight through yeah there we go so yeah you don't have to like use those um select selection filtering options or anything like that just simply with a tap of a f key you can start snap customizing your snap options that was tip number three okay so this is one of those niche commands that i think is so useful but so little people know about it and whenever i use it it's just like it's all inspiring for people who didn't know about it and that is the between command so between i don't know where it's documented i don't know how i found it but apparently it allows you to click on a place that is between two geometries let me show you an example so let's go find let's go create a an, another cube right over here and let's put it in the arbitrary area right there okay now what if what if what if i want to select a point just in between these two vertices of these boxes like okay i guess i can go ahead and create a polyline and do that okay and then select the midpoint using the mid snap right okay that's not too bad but now you have this um polyline that you have to remember to delete and if you don't like it just clutters clut up your model right and what if you want to start snapping to multiple places let's say you want to snap between these two points right over here another point right over here like you have to create three different polygons like that or polylines like this between command is here to help you out so let me show you an example so let's say i want to draw the same thing but so our end goal looks like this our end goal is midpoint 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 oh that's a straight line okay Wow, but now I have to like delete all this and that's that's a lot of hassle, right? What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use between. So let's start with the polyline. And for this, I can start typing in between like that. And now it asks you to choose a first point. And that means you can choose a first point right over here. And after that, it, uh, it prompts you to select the second point. And if you look closely, between this little guiding line, there's a midpoint, what is that called, a crosshair? And that's, that implies where your selection is actually going to be, not the vertices that I'm selecting right now. So let's click on here and boom, your polyline starts from the midpoint between the first and the second point. Okay, I don't know, I, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm like super nerdy. I don't know if anyone gets excited by these things, but this got me super excited when I found out because I didn't know, like it doesn't say at the bottom, like. How do you find out about this? I don't know. But anyways, you can repeat this process and start drawing geometries between like kind of in an acrobatic fashion between two points. And it's super clean. There's nothing left behind. And since this is all about the shortcuts, I'm going to add this to our shortcut list. Let's go down to options and under keyboard. And I like to put this in F12. All I have to do is type in between and say OK. And now, whenever I press F12, it'll prompt me to select two points, and I'm off to races. Off to the race? Off to races? I don't know. I don't know the right word is. But boom! There we go. That was a tip number four, and go ahead and show this off to your friends and blow their minds. Next one is Control W for maxing and minimizing window. This idea came from my experience using 3D Max. 3D Max has a shortcut where you can press Alt W. 3D Max by default shows you quadrant layout, just like Rhino, you know, sort of like this, right? The four view. And when you want to zoom into one of them, you can hit Alt W and that maximizes the view that you are currently selected. So it would do something like that. And in Rhino, I don't think that exists by default. Correct me if I'm wrong. But since I was used to this Alt W shortcut, I wanted to do something similar in Rhino. And in Rhino, like I, I see people just like double clicking on the name to go to full view and then to make it smaller, just like. And if you do it by mistake, you have to like travel all the way across the screen. I know it's like very small things, but trust me, it adds up. And the command is max viewport. So whenever before you get into like um, actually adding shortcut commands. You can test it out just by like, you know, typing it in and running the commands to make sure that it works. So let's type in max window and as you can see, or max viewport. 
and this maximizes your current viewport. But what's really cool about this command is that you can also run the same thing to make the window smaller. So if you just simply hit enter, as you can see, you're toggling between max and min view. All right, let's put this into our keyboard shortcut. And because I'm coming from 3D Max, I wanted to put this into Alt W, but unfortunately, Alt option doesn't exist in Rhino, just going Alt W. So what I did instead is I just started using Command W instead. And you know, once you get used to it, it's totally fine. So right now, Alt Control W is set to zoom, but I'm just gonna go ahead and change that to Max Viewport and hit OK. And now whenever I hit Control W, I can maximize and minimize my screen. And yeah, there we go. So these are the top five keyboard shortcuts that I love using. There are tons more out there, but these were the only things I could think of today. So let's get started with these and I'll follow up with some more videos. Um, I hope you found these helpful and make sure to customize it to your own need. You don't have to do the exact same thing as I did. This is all about your personal preference and making your workflow better. Yeah, there are some things I found useful, so I wanted to tell you about it. And if you have any tips or tricks that you want to share with me, please feel free to leave it in the comments. And um, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye!